Hey guys, it's Kylie, and we're here at Fairchild to learn about the SEER Survival School. Let's go. Welcome. Hi. Hi. My name is Kylie. My name is Brett. Good to meet you. Yes. Awesome. Very excited for this. You excited? Good. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So today we're going to show you guys. We're gonna go over a little bit of what we do in this building. We call this the Bud Day building. And then we'll head over to the Searside Gym. Then we'll go to the parachuting building. And then afterwards, we'll go to what we call the Back 40, go outside and teach you how to, how to build some fire. Does that sound good? Yeah. What is SEER? So SEER stands for Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape Specialist. So that's what we do. We teach about how to survive. Um, we teach all the people that are going to be riding in the aircraft, like the pilots and things like that, if they were to get shot down and crash, we, we want them to get back safely, right? So it's going to take a little bit for us to be able to go pick them up. So we teach them how to survive, build shelters, build fires, and stay warm, so that way they can survive and stay alive until we can go get them. Oh, yes. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. So this is the building where it kind of happens, where we first start, um, as instructors, we start to learn how to be instructors. We go through a six-month course, how to how to teach the pilots and things like that. Um, so we can walk through, yeah, it's a long time. So we can walk through this building um, and show you a little bit of our classrooms and our auditorium. So you said that you learn how to survive. Is that like being a Boy Scout? Pretty much. We learn a lot of the same survival skills that the Boy Scouts do, but just more on a advanced level so that we can be able to teach it. We go through some harder stuff and through some different environments. Oh, <laughs> through some different environments so that way we can actually have experience to teach all of those different environments. So we spend hours in here. Holy moly. Hours and hours in here just looking at PowerPoints, learning how to do different lessons, um, trying to stay awake <laughs> best we can. Yeah, a lot. So they keep us awake for part of our training, um, like sleep, sleep deprivation. So they keep us awake for a long period of time. And so then they make us come in here and try to watch lessons on the screen up there. And it's super hard to stay awake. So if you, don't, if you can't stay awake, you have to stand up and watch the entire lesson for like three hours and just stand up. And if you get caught, caught falling asleep, then you got to do push-ups. So you don't want to be caught falling asleep. Once we get done in the auditorium with our bigger lessons, we break up into smaller groups, come in here just like you would have a class. Um, and then they'll teach us things about, about medical, about first aid, so that we can be able to have a basic knowledge of how to help people too if they get hurt. Um, or basic navigation classes, like if you see up here, you have a big map and compasses and things like that. Wow. So that way, we don't get lost in the woods. Yeah, this does look like a normal classroom except for the chairs and that giant table. But the whiteboard looks the same. Yep, pretty much the same, huh? Just like school. Yep. Awesome. And that pretty much does it for this side. Um, just where all the learning is done. Why do you have to wear a different hat than my mom? That's a good question. So these hats are just basically to identify us that we're the survival instructors. Because um, we have a lot of students that come through here. And so if we're all dressed um, in the same hats that your mom wears, um, then we kind of can't really tell us apart. So just so they can tell us apart. Oh, yeah. Cool. Simple. Simple. Yep. Think you can do some pull-ups? I know how. <laughs> okay. Can you reach it. <laughs> no, I can't reach it. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah! Oh, reach, reach, reach. Ah. Okay. Oh yeah. You can do it. Let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Failed your school. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> your so when, school is failed. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're going through our school to become instructors, every time we go inside the building, we have to do pull-ups and push-ups. And then every time we come out, we have to do pull-ups and push-ups too. So if you want to go inside, you're going to have to get up and do push-ups or pull-ups. And then have to do push-ups. Yeah. Working out a big part of your job or not? 
yeah, it's pretty big because when we're in the woods taking care of students, we have to carry big rucks on our back, like big backpacks that weigh a lot of, um, oh my weigh a lot. And so we have to be able to be at least strong enough to carry those. If you're not, you're probably just like <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna just be out of breath and just like exhausted all day and not gonna be able to teach. So that's kind of why they have a gym specifically for us on this side. Why did the Air Force decide to have the Sears School at Fairchild? Well, to the best of my knowledge, it's because Washington contains all of the environments that you can find around the world. So up here, we have the temperate forest, which it just means we have a lot of pine trees and it snows, but it also has four seasons. And then oh. we also have the desert here in Washington. And if you go over to where the beach is, we have the tropical environment um, and even a rainforest over there. So we can kind of stay over in this little bubble of Washington and meet all those requirements. All right, so where are you gonna build your muscle? You ready? Ready to go through a workout? I've climbed the rope before. Have you? Uh-huh. You can try to climb it if you want. Sweet. So this is... Yeah, that looks good. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. You okay? Yep. All right. Nice. I don't even think I could get that high. You just schooled me, showed me up. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, so this is our little small gym, but um, we just missed them. But the guys that are training to become instructors, they have to come here for like three hours every morning. Three um, hours? And no one else is allowed to come in. And so they are specifically a lot of this time in here. Yeah, but it's a pretty nice gym. We also teach our combatives program in here. So I heard you like to do some jujitsu, is that right? Mm -hmm. Nice. So we teach our students a really small part of jujitsu. We'll like pull out wrestling mats and put them on the ground um, and we'll teach them some stuff. Um, why is it important that you learn combatives? Well, it's important for our students to know that because they're, if they go down, they get shot down. Um, they're going to be running from the enemy most likely. And so if they do have an encounter with an enemy, a bad guy, um, they need to know how to fight and get away from that person, right? I do know how to choke someone out too. Wanna try? Uh, <laughs> just no, just kidding. Okay. Nah, I'm just teasing. I don't want to get choked out today. <laughs> Who are your students normally? So our students there, a pretty big range. So we have all the, all the pilots, they come through. Then we also have basically any air crew. So like a load master or anybody that rides in the back of an aircraft as well. And then some people that are on the ground, so more of like your people that you see with guns, like your soldiers that are on the ground, your special operators, yeah, <laughs> right? So they'll come through here as well. Um, but any air crew is mainly our biggest customer, biggest student. What does our term with honor mean? What do you think it means? Well, first, before I answer. <laughs> you return from a deployment and people are just like, ah! <laughs> they're all cheering and they're like, yeah, yeah. Like yep. that. Yeah, pretty much. So return with honor is like our motto, especially for our students. So if they go down and they get shot down, maybe they get captured and they have to go to a jail, like an enemy jail or prison. Return with honor is just if we get them back, we want them to have kept their held or their head held high. We want them to have to be healthy and to be confident that the U.S. Um, basically cares for them is going to come rescue them. for the Air Force if the Sears School didn't exist? Uh, that's a pretty big question because if this didn't exist, then anybody that got shot down overseas or was trying to survive in the woods, they wouldn't have any of the skills to make it back home. So there's a bigger chance that they wouldn't make it back. They wouldn't survive. What's the coolest thing that you learned how to do here? We learned lots of cool stuff. My favorite thing <laughs> that I learned how to do is to parachute, so jump out of uh, airplanes and helicopters. So that do doesn't really have to do with survival, but it's fun. So did you have to like jump, go on a plane and then they had to go on a certain amount of height in the air and then you had to jump? Yeah, so we usually jump, it's like 1,500 feet. And 
either the helicopter or the plane. It's about the same height. So 1,500 and then we just jump out and hope our parachute catches us. Do you know where we're going next? Yeah, we're gonna go over to our parachuting building. <gasps> so, you could say like my favorite building. Yeah. I like being outside more, but if I had to choose a building, it would be this building. Nice. Is he sleeping or is this just... Yeah, he's just hanging out, taking a nap. Mm. Taking a nap when he's searching, that's not nice. Just kidding. Fake dude. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of the classroom of the parachuting building. They come in here, we show them stuff on the screen, all right, so that way they're prepared when we take them in the other room. Is but, that a parachute? Yeah, these are all different kinds of parachutes that we use up here on the wall. I think parachutes were that big. They're pretty dang big. Um, yeah. So, there's this building. There's just some. I like this room just because it's cool. They're there's just like for single person. Lots of cool stuff. Things. Yeah. For just one person, it's pretty crazy. This is a seat. So, like in the fighter, the fighter jets. This is like the seats that they would sit in, and then they would pull this button or pull this tab, and it would eject them out. Why would they want to eject out of the plane? What if you just hit the ceiling? Yeah, that'd be that'd be a uh, a bad day, right? So they want to eject if there's anything wrong, like if their engine goes out, or maybe they get shot, and they have no longer control of their aircraft. Um, they can pull that button, and then the top of their aircraft will open, and then they'll shoot out of it like a rocket, and their parachute will come out. That way, if their parachute or their aircraft goes crashing to the ground, they can still float down. Um, so it's like kind of a last resort thing. You don't really just want to do it unless you're in big danger. Oh yeah. All right, we'll go in here. They're doing stuff in here, so we'll just peek in real quick. But. So this is where we take our students, and we, there's a ton of harnesses, or a ton of, I guess, risers hanging from the roof. And so we put our students all in these harnesses, and they hang from there, and then we, we run them through any kind of malfunction that they would have with their parachute. So if they got a hole or twisted lines, that way if they're, they have to use their parachute, they know what to do if, it, if it's not working right. That's cool. Yeah, and then this is where the the parachute riggers, they pack up the parachutes. So they're about oh, to do that right now. they got goggles. Yeah. So all our students, they have to wear goggles, they have to wear leather gloves when they come through. That way they don't get their fingers pinched. They take the goggles and I slap them on their face. Yep. Sweet. All right. You guys ready? <laughs> Sweet, these guys are gonna be showing you guys a few cool things in here, but I'll run you through this list stuff. Come feel it down here. Like, it's pretty cool, super soft. Oh, so is this is for if you fall off the, per the thing and then you just. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah exactly. It's, so it's pretty soft, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so this is like. It's rubber. Let's call this the parachute pit. So that way, it's made out of rubber tires actually. Um, but then we run them through, they go on this zip line and then they kind of let go and fall off. And Are we, we gonna do it? Yeah. We'll, show, we'll have one of these guys show you in a second. Because when you fall and hit the ground on a parachute or underneath parachute, you have to do proper form or you're gonna break a leg or break an ankle or something. If you were coming down under parachute and you get stuck in a tree, right? Your parachute's in a tree and you're just stuck hanging there. How are you gonna get down, do you think? Uh, are you gonna have to let go of your parachute or something? If you just get out of your harness, you could jump out. But what if that tree's like 100 feet tall? Then you're gonna jump and fall 100 feet. Ah, probably break your legs, right? Right. Then I don't know what you have to do. You have yeah. like a rope in your bag or something yeah. and you just have to tie it and then <laughs> <laughs> climb down? Pretty much. So it's called a PLD or parachute or personnel lowering device. So it's like in your harness on your parachute. That way if you get stuck, you can just pull it out. And you'll see here it's 150 feet long. That way if you're in something super high, you can lower it to the ground. You'll be stuck in the parachute. He's, he's like acting like he's stuck in a tree right now. He's not just gonna fall to the ground. Oh yeah. He, so he just has to climb down it? It's a pretty cool device, watch this. All he has to do is lower his hand that's holding onto that. Boom. And now he's 
free from his harness. He's only hanging on that rope. And now he just has to lower his hand and boom, he just lowered himself down. It's pretty sweet. And then if he brings that hand up, it stops him it's like a break. Wow. Is it scary? Uh, the first time you do it, absolutely. Uh, but you know, we do it so many times as two specialists that you, know, you get used to it by the time you've done it four or five times. So. First time a little sticky, but now after that. Yeah. Heck yeah. Want to take off that harness and show her uh, PLF too? Sure. Sweet. So he's going to show you our zip line, right? We call this our lateral drift apparatus. So a lot of big words, but basically it's just a zip line. It's to show you if you were coming down under parachute and you were drifting to the side, like the wind was pushing you, this is what would happen. And this is how you're going to have to fall. So watch how he rolls. Plant. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to try it. So we probably won't have you try falling from there, but we'll show you on the ground, right? So put your feet and your knees together. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your hands up by your face. Mm -hmm. And then when you fall, you're basically gonna put your knees out to the left side. It's kind of weird. And then you're gonna look to your right side. So just like this. And then you're just gonna fall. Oh. <laughs> it's weird, but. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. That was pretty good. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, um, but that's what we call our parachute landing fall. It keeps you safe. It keeps you from, if you hit the ground and your feet are spread like this, you might break a leg or break a knee or something like that. So we just teach all our students that to be safe. Can we try this one? Yeah, you want to try it? Okay. It's going to be good. It's a good thing I know how to fall properly. So I can just put them together before I fall and then. All right, can you reach this? And then don't don't let go. You'll hold on and we'll you can we'll slow you down and then you can jump off on the pad. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Whew. All right. You gonna do anything crazy? Um, you gonna say anything crazy before you go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Go ahead. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> nice. All right, guys. You guys you wanna put this up for us? That was fun. Sweet. Thank you. We're out in the woods. So we call this place the Back 40 just means like the outskirts, right? So this is where we can come and do some training. We can practice beforehand, or before we're actually gonna be tested on this stuff, we can come here, practice building shelters, practice building fires, or just have a good time with our friends or family. Yeah, uh, so it's good, it's like a good hangout. It's pretty cool right here, right? Yeah, you wanna sit in the throne? That's what it is? You feel like a queen? You'd be the queen of the back 40. Is there a little boss sit here? Oh yeah. This is just where we keep like all our, if we have any wood, we'll just throw a bunch of wood in here to keep it dry from the rain and the snow. Um, there's some canopies back there. So those are like covers for a life raft, which we'll see over at the pool. And we can use those to build shelters. So anything that you could find in like an aircraft that an air crew member might have, they can build a shelter out of. So that's why we use those. Is it hard how to learn to build a shelter like this? No, not really. I mean, this big one, yeah, it takes, you're never really gonna build this if you're trying to survive. But the really simple kind of shelters that we teach our students, they're really easy. You can do it easy, I'm sure. So here's an example of a kind of natural shelter over here. We call this a lean-to. So we just put a log, tied it to the tree, and this is just holding it up. It's a little log in the beginning. And then we just laid a whole bunch of logs on top of that. Um, and if it was leaning even further, this is a little bit too vertical, but if it was leaning even more, you'd have a lot more room in here. Um, but this would keep you dry. You could build a fire right out front and keep you nice and cozy. Oh yeah. So you want to learn how to build a fire or what? I want to learn how to build a fire. That's okay, let me see what I need. Let me get my stuff real quick. What do you keep in your backpack? 
Let's just take a look, see what I have in here. This one, nothing. That's a pen. It's an extra beanie. We got a GPS flashlight. We got some fire starter. You'll hold on to that. We got another GPS. We got a signal mirror. I also got a compass. And of course, the most important is an axe. Probably every seer guy's favorite tool. Is it an axe? Is an axe. I never seen Boom. So we got our axe here. Really big knife. Got my leather glove so I don't cut myself. I've got a poncho so you can protect yourself from the rain. Oh, or you can use this to build a shelter too. We've got an emergency sleeping bag in here. Another knife. Oh, we've got a saw. This is a map. Big map. And paracord. That way you can build shelters like that if you don't have a poncho or tie your poncho up. And that's just stuff that I had left in my pack. So if I was going out to the woods, it might carry more stuff on me, like a first aid kit. That way if anybody gets hurt, if I hurt myself, right, you don't want to bleed out there and then get infected all yucky. Mm. Gross. You sir seem like you'd be a really good guy to go camping with. <laughs> uh, that's what my wife says too. Do you ever go camping with this stuff? Yeah, I do a little bit, but usually when I go camping, it's a secret you can't tell. I now, I like to sleep in a tent with an air mattress, nice and cozy. That way I don't have to sleep cold or on the ground. <laughs> I've slept on the ground too many times. <laughs> Anyways, back to our fire. Let's grab all of, so I've already prepped up some wood. Ooh, yeah, and you can just put that right by that barrel in the middle. And we'll get to that in a second. A broken barrel. Broken barrel. Just put it right, put it right by this actually. Boom, perfect. Now come over here. So you asked earlier, how do we build a fire if it's all wet outside, all right? Well, this is one way we teach our students where you can start a fire anywhere. Right, so you're gonna start with a piece of wood about this size or a tree that's not maybe that big around, right? You could use that little saw or you could even just push over a dead tree. And then this is how we normally break it up. This is what we call the batoning method or the beater stick method because we have a beater stick right here. So you take your wood, you put it on something hard, take your knife, put it on top of there, and now we just Once they're small enough, I'm gonna do what we call the throttle method. And what I'm trying to do is I wanna make the wood as small as possible. So we're starting at wood that's like a pencil size. So really, really small and thin. That way it lights fast. And then you want thumb size pieces as well. So you start really small, have a pile of those, then you get a little bit bigger um, and have a pile of those as well. So the throttling method helps us break it down. I'm gonna do is stick my tip of my knife about three inches from my wood and I lift up together, and then I throttle like you're driving a motorcycle. Warm up. Boom, and then I just lift up my knife and I keep doing that. That way, when I pull it apart, now I got tons of little pieces. And I can keep breaking them up the same way, just making them smaller and smaller. So now, what I'll show you, this is kind of a harder technique that I'm gonna show you, but it's pretty cool. So you get a piece of wood, just need a really small wood. See how those little shavings are coming off like that? Yeah. Yeah, and then I can just cut in a little bit deeper and I'll peel that off and I'll save that to the side. All right, now, do you have that fire starter I gave you? Right here. Sweet. Cool. What is fire starter? <laughs> so another word for fire starter is tinder. Tinder just means something that's small enough that will catch fire with a spark or something like that, right? So all this is, this is a cotton ball, like a normal cotton ball you'd use at home. And then it's dipped in Vaseline. So anything that you could find at home. Um, don't be doing this at home and lighting your house on fire, but it's something you can practice if your parents are watching. All right, so I would take my cotton ball and I would just spread it apart a little bit. That way it's not just a hard rock. And then I'm gonna place this on a platform. So why do you think I have a platform? So that way it doesn't get wet? Yeah, same thing, right? To keep my fire off the ground and soaking up the, the moisture. Oh. Nice, so I also have these two braces right here. So these are to block the wind. So if it was really windy, you could angle this so the wind isn't getting straight to your flame. Okay, 
and then this is just to layer our wood across. So what I'm gonna have you do, and you can practice a few times, so this is called our metal match. Mm -hmm. Check this out. You could have a lighter, you could have matches as well. Um, but this lasts a really long time and doesn't run out of gas, or if it's wet, you know, you can still, it'll still work, okay? So you're gonna put this in your right hand, I'm all Vaseline-y. So you put this in your right hand, this in your good hand, and so the back of this saw, the flat part, or you know you're gonna put it flat. I don't know if I can do this left-handed. Flat on that um, metal match. You're gonna lean it back just a little bit. You're gonna put a lot of pressure, and you're just gonna scrape it. Think you can do that? We have our wood to the side that's like, ready. Like this? Yep. I'll move this one out of the way. Yeah, we can move this to the side. You can come where I am, because I'm kind of in the way, huh? You'll get there. Six and a half hours later. I'm gonna push down. Ooh, so you got it, nice. And now we get our feather sticks. We put our feather sticks on there. Woohoo! And then we're gonna take our smaller stuff. Oh, we're just gonna lay it out like a fan on our braces. Can I try it? Yeah, so take some of this. And then the next layer, you're gonna put it this way. So you're gonna keep crisscrossing like tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And then it's gonna slowly start to burn through. Once you can see flames through the next layer, you can start to add more and more. And then pretty soon, once it gets hot enough, you don't have to put small stuff, because that's gonna take a lot of time. You can just take any dry logs that you find and just throw it right on top. Yeah, so you can put those on top. Should I just toss them? Get a little bit closer, it won't burn you, just like go real fast. Like a pro. Heck yeah. Was that fun? Mm -hmm. You just started your very first fire, like a pro, with the metal match. Not many people can do that, or not many people have done that, so. You should be proud. I'm proud. <laughs> you guys do some really cool stuff at Sear. You're probably really proud to be a Sear specialist. I am, thanks. Um, I think it's pretty cool, and I think it's important. I'm pretty proud to, to be part of this and the mission that we do. I kind of want to be one. Yeah? You yeah, should. If I ever get in the Air Force, I'd want this part. Do it. There's actually um, a few females, a few girls that are Sear specialists too. There's one that just graduated. There's one that I'm going to be working with soon. So we definitely need more girls in our career field. I'm in.